and a tower. And in the translation of Bible de la Paix says this, and they said, come, let us build a city and a tower in bracket pyramid. So here you're told that the city, the tower of Babel that they were building were, was a pyramid. And we know the origin of pyramids. We know the race, the people that build the pyramids. Even up to, to this day, they have no idea how those Egyptians at their time, the black Egyptians, did build those pyramids. They're still, they don't know. Because their knowledge was so advanced that even today with all their technology, they are unable to find out and they are unable to do to know how 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 he happened because it's beyond them so it's knowledge that is beyond beyond their abilities but in genesis 11 4 they were building pyramids since then great pyramids since then and those were greater and better than those that you see today those are just the remains the little uh, remains that you see, you know, the little remnant uh, remains, little things that you see. But those that were previous to those that you see are, were even greater. Technological marvel. And you have to understand that now they're copying it, right? They, they're taking those and they're trying to replicate, meaning they're trying to do the same. And they're trying to now appropriate that. That's why they're now saying, okay, uh, oh, it was the alien that built those. And then they're going to say, well, okay, that's a little bit too far-fetched. Uh, but it wasn't black people, you know, because they don't want to admit that black people had the knowledge, had the technology, and had the superior intelligence than them. So that's why they erased them from the books. And when you go back, when you research in ancient Egypt, a lot of their knowledge, because in university today and in schools, you will, when you go in university and in schools, most of the books, they're going to tell you, even in philosophy, mathematics, that all their knowledge come from ancient Greek, ancient Rome, because that's where, for them, their civilization began that's where their knowledge began that's where their empire began you know but when you go back before that where were they barbarians you know vikings you know but these people where their civilization began according to them as well they went into egypt previously to learn from the egyptians at that time and went back into their own place and then built and then had civilization and then began writing and then became no to know mathematics astrology ph philosophy all those came in after they went back after they went into egypt learned from the egyptians that's where they got their knowledge but they never give them credit and they don't give them credit like that that, that guy pythagore the theorem they're gonna say a square plus b square equals c square they're gonna say Pythagore oh, is too bright you know but they're, ne they're never gonna say that oh that that guy went into egypt to study that the egyptian taught him when we talk about pyramids we're talking about triangles why are they erasing the the authors meaning who gave them the knowledge they don't want to give credit their arrogance they want to lie trick make themselves uh, more seem more intelligent than they actually are and those are the people that we shouldn't follow believe everything they they say we need to double triple quadruple verify for ourselves 
we have to verify with, with our own sources. We cannot accept and take everything they're saying for granted. Now the pyramids. So, yeah. And then after they build, well, after they were building, that's where the continent, the continent was split. So that's after the continental drift happened. And here you can see those are the last one that are still standing, some of the last one. Now, even before those pyramids in Genesis 11, 4, you have to understand that the person, the first man, the one known today in the current day Bibles as Adam, he wasn't, uh, I mean, he had a lot of knowledge. He had more knowledge than any man had and can have. Regular man. He had more knowledge than his descendant. Because he was created by the creator. And the other came in from, came in from him. So that means he was bright. Because if you're telling me that he was created by God, to go the word you use, but then he didn't know, he didn't know how to make fire, he didn't know how to build a house, how to, how to have technology, how to have electricity. I mean, so his descendant learned things better than him. When he himself, his intelligence and everything, he was created by the creator himself and he was perfect and the people that are born today they, they're not perfect they have defects they have a lot of uh, lack of understanding lack of knowledge they have to learn they have to seek search but the first man when he was created he was created perfect meaning physically intellectually mentally and spiritually and now we're gonna talk a little bit about his descendant meaning uh, here let me move this okay in Genesis 4 4 4 17 English Standard Version it says this here Cain knew his wife so Cain is the son of Adam and Eve according to the current day Bible so he's the son of the first man and the first woman in fact he's the first son Cain knew his wife comma and she conceived and bore Enoch period when he built a city Comma. So you're told here that Cain built a city. So when you build something, that means you have the knowledge to be able to build. To build. That means you, you have the knowledge, the ability to understand. You have, techno you have technological abilities to be able to build a city, to be able to conceive that this need to go there, this how, this. So, because many people, they, they, they'll go to, um, to school to learn how to design, how to build skyscraper. But you're told here that Cain himself, he says here, he built a city. He called the name of the city after the name of his son, Enoch. So he built a city. Cosmogony 4.14. So that's Genesis 4.14, but in another version, in Fabre d'Olivet translation. However, Cain knew his efficient voli volitional fa faculty, comma, and she conceived, 
Kama, and she gave birth to, to Kama, the central and founding force. Then he began to build a spherical circuit, a fortified enclosure, to which he gave the name of his son, Enoch. So here you're told that Cain, the first son of Adam, so that means the first man, he began to build a spherical circuit. Now, what is a circuit? A circuit is something that has electricity in, in it. It's something that is electrified. That's what is a circuit. And it was spherical, meaning it was round. So he built a round circuit. He built it. So the city that he was building was round, like a circuit, in the shape, shape, round shape. And he, he was electrified, a fortified. So it was fortified, fortified. So right now you see fort that fall apart, that um, the enemy can go there and there. But here it was a fortified enclosure to which he gave the name of his son, Enoch, which means initiated. So, as well, Cain had the knowledge of electricity and circuits and the ability to build, to build, to design, to undergo big project now even when you go this is some um, in some of the pyramids what does that remind you of doesn't it look like a bulb like a um, light bulb doesn't it look like electricity of some kind? Advanced. Those are the trace that we can see what was going on. So the comment he said, I am. Uh, I come from Russia and what you are say is correct. Yeah. We it's the truth. It's the truth. No no matter your race, your origin, as long as you like justice, you like the truth, you like knowledge, you want to understand, you want to find out. Because that's, we are on earth to learn, to understand, to, to become better, meaning to be initiated, to learn, to be cultivated, educated. And all those lies that's been going on for generations and generations, we need to put a stop to it. To all those churches all around the world, little here, little there, lies after lies, uh, misconception, confusion. I mean, there's so many churches, so many, and they don't even agree between themselves. How does that make sense? Where is the spirit of um, of community? Because l let's think about this for one one moment here. They will claim that there is the Holy Spirit, right? So there's one Holy Spirit, and all these churches are claiming, oh, they have this the Holy Spirit. Well, why are then all your teachings so different and so contradictory? They will say, no, this guy is wrong. The other guy will say, no, that person is wrong. Don't go to that church, they're, they're liars. Don't go to that church, they're liars. 
but they're they're reading the same Bibles. Each of them are claiming they have the Spirit. Each of them will say they like will claim they like Christ. Will worship their same fake Christ. You see, so many, so many churches and uh, fragments, so many religions. But we know there's one Creator, so it should be one creator it should be one doctrine one spirituality it should be one understanding it shouldn't be so many here and there and so many various so many variants you know right now we're talking about the uh, variants you know and the variants become more more dangerous one variant is dangerous you know because they're, they're, they're spread so much they're they, they're all over the place and it's the same thing with religions they're all over the place and they are dangerous one they're dangerous what they do to the minds of those people that go there the lies it's dangerous the ideology the doctrine that they're preaching oh no the savior is white oh no Adam and Eve were white. Oh no, just, just don't think about, don't ask, don't ask tough questions. Just you know, uh, confess your sin and then that's it. I mean, they're making it. See, they're they're making it like, just confess and don't don't even pay attention to what we're saying. You know, don't don't research, don't read. Even before, they were not allowing people to read. Is just recently that they're allowing those Christians to have Bibles. But if you go 100, 200 years or a little bit further, only the preacher, only the Pope, only the, those that were high rank were able to have the Bible and to know only them knew how to read. Only back in the days, only they, they'll say aristoc aristocrats knew how to read. So they will, they will, they could read and make interpretation as they pleased, because the other didn't even know how to read and couldn't challenge them. We have to come out of that fog, of that blindness, of those lies. <clears throat> now we talk about technology and here we have some pyramids even in uh, Ethiopia Nubia East Africa you know there's pyramids even in Central Africa and here we have the map Central Africa so we have the North North Africa where there is Jene meaning Egypt we have West Africa, Wasi Benge. We have Wasi Mutonga. That's Central Africa. That's where Israel is. Israel is Tombwane Bila, meaning uh, win the war, to win the war. And that's where the Garden of Eden was. You can see is in the east region of Central Africa. Oh, sorry, west region of Central Africa. And then you have East Africa, Wasi Jedu, where you have uh, Babylon, Assyria, the Tigris River, and then you have Wasi Pasi Mikondo, Mikondo, Wasi Pasi Mikondo. Uh, so that's uh, South Africa. So, we went over quite a bit of things. Um, here we have falsification and negationism of black people through history. And I'll just put this one like this. All right. Let's make it center. All right, 
We've been going on for three hours now. If you have any questions, you may ask them. But yeah, falsification. So they falsified history. That's what they did. They falsified history. They changed the books. They changed. They, they, they made a lot of translations, uh, a lot of fake translations, lies, errors, full of errors and contradiction in it to lie. Uh, also, you have the Ark of Noah, where they will claim no, he, he did end up in the Mount Ararat, which is they will claim in Europe or in the Middle East, so forth and so on. But those places those places didn't even exist because the continents were split in Genesis 11. Right. So that means before Genesis 11, it was one block, one continent. So those other continents, those Europe's and Middle East, didn't exist. It was one block. So it couldn't have landed in those land. Now, let's go a little bit into yeah, this. It says here in Lamentation 5.2. Our inheritance has been torn, turned over to strangers, our owns to foreigners. Now, who are the strangers and who are the foreigners? We know black people are not foreigners because they've been the first on every land. They've been, it's the, it's the first race on earth and the word belongs to them. So if the word belongs to us, black people, we are not strangers. Then, if our inheritance has been turned over to strangers and our home to foreigners, the foreigners are the other race. And that's what in Lamentation, the prophet Jeremiah in the current day Bible, Bele, was saying. That. So, that lie, those lies, it didn't start just now, it was going on since before where they're trying to change history and try to erase the trace of the true prophets and change their names so many. But the restoration is here. Here we have the contradictions in these Bibles. This is just a little sample, you know, it's not every, but it's just a sample of all the contradictions. You can go into them in those Bibles, in those current day Bibles. Something that's holy shouldn't have not one. None. And even less, so many. So many. There is so many. But those who claim to be Christian, who claim people that claim to be smart, you know, <clears throat> I mean, those are the same people that go to school. And then when there's something, when they read a book, sometimes they will challenge their teacher. They will say, oh, you know what you're saying here? It doesn't add up, teacher. You know, they, they online, they will, they will always try to, to contradict each other criticize you know so they try to to act like they're critical thinkers but when they go into church and they see when they read their bible they don't want to be critical no more they want to leave their brain behind they want to leave their reflection behind they just want to go blindly and that's the issue that's the issue Because they were made to believe that no, you don't contest this book. It's so pure, you know, don't, don't try to think. Don't try to think when you read this. Don't, don't try to reflect. Just read it and accept. That's it. You know, be, 
because why why would they say that because they know that if you read and if if you reflect if you have knowledge reflection intelligence you will you will, you will be like oh, oh, oh stop 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 you're telling me this is holy but here in genesis 6 6 and in numbers 23 19 what is in genesis 6 and we're going to read Genesis 6, 6, 6, he says this. <clears throat> so Joshua, the son of Nun, called the priest and said to them, Take up the Ark of the Covenant and let seven priests bear seven trumpets of ram horn before the Ark of the Lord. I know, that's Joshua. Genesis, Genesis, Genesis. I was in the wrong verse. Dun, 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 dun. All right, Genesis 6, 6. So the Lord said, I will blow out men whom I have created from the face of the land, men and animals and creeping things and bird of the heaven, for I am sorry that I have made them. So, in Genesis 6.6, 6, listen to this. <clears throat> I mean, how much are they going to get away with? How much do they think they can get away with? In Genesis 6.6, 6, you're told that the Lord said. Before that, we're going to go into Genesis uh, 6.1. So, give a little bit of context. When men began to multiply on the face of the land, and daughters were born to them, the sons of God saw that the daughters of men were attracted, and they took as their wives any they chose. Verse 3, Then the Lord said, My spirit shall not abide in man forever, for he is flesh. His days shall be one twenty years. The Nephilim were on the earth in those days and also afterwards when the sons of God came in to the daughters of men and they bore children to them these were mighty men who were of old the men of renown verse 5 the Lord saw that the wickedness of men was great in the earth and that every intention of the thought of his heart was only evil continually. continually. And the Lord regretted that he had made man on the earth, and he grieved him to his heart. So the Lord said, I will blow out men whom I have created from the face of the land men and animals and creeping beings creeping things and birds of the heaven for i am sorry that i have made them verse 8 but noah found favor in the eyes of the lord so here you're told that the lord that god of that, those bibles saw that they were wicked wicked men at that time period and that their intention were evil. So he regretted in his heart. He was afflicted. Now. How can God be afflicted? How can God in his heart. So that means he has a heart. So if he has a heart. Does that mean he has blood? So his, his heart is pumping blood. So is he flesh? Is he flesh? That's the question. And then he was sorry that I have made men. So he regretted, according to those Bible, that God of the Bible regretted to have created. And they would claim he's the creator. He knows everything. Uh, he's above everything and everyone. But then he... So when he was... When that God of the Bible was creating, didn't he know 
what was going to happen. Then why did when it happened, he then began to to have sorrow, regrets, and uh, be in pain, basically? Is it limited? <sighs> the true creator cannot regret. He cannot be afflicted. I mean, who, what is, who wrote this? <laughs> Who wrote this? I mean, and then you go in Numbers 2319, right? <clears throat> Let's go to Numbers 2319. See how, I mean, they themselves, 2319, the same version, huh? I'm not going to go into another version because, so, it should be the same, same people that wrote this. So, they know what's going on. They should know. Now, in Numbers 2319, it says this. God is not man, comma. So now they're saying God is not a man. But in Genesis 6, 6, he regretted in his heart. So he had a heart. So, okay. <clears throat> God is not a man, comma, that he should lie, comma, or a son of man, comma, that he should change his mind, period. So here they're saying God doesn't change his mind. God doesn't change his mind. So, why then, in Genesis 6, 6, he regretted? Because when you regret, that means you did something and you're like, oh, man, what I did there was bad. I regret it. You know, I shouldn't have done that. I should have thought better. I should have been better. So, <laughs> here in Numbers 23 and 19, at least they said, they understand that, oh, that doesn't apply to God. But here, that he should change his mind. So that, does that mean God has a mind as well? You know, so, so many, so many mistakes, contradictions, errors, things that simply doesn't add up. But... Here we are, we have Bibel, the authentic Bible, the only authentic Bible, without the Bible, without errors or contradictions or anything of the sort. And in there, you won't find those ridiculous things that though God regretted, makes no sense at all. I mean... Even a child can understand this. That if you're telling that, okay, God, according to even them, they're going to say God is powerful. He knows everything. You know, he's not limited. He cannot suffer. He's not contained. Then you're saying that that same being, that same person or that same whatever, still suffer? Still regrets? I mean, those are, those are things men do. Beings, creatures, those, that's what they do. You know, things, people that are living in the moment that cannot see the future, that are contained in time and space, and they don't know what the future holds. So when they're making decisions at this time, they don't know if those, when they're making plans, they don't know if it's gonna go well, or it is going to go a little bit so-so, or it's going to go bad. But God is not the true creator. He's not limited by those. So when they say, when they claim in Genesis 6, 6, that no, God regretted to have made man, I mean, so he's limited. So your God is limited. Then you have to accept that your God is limited. That's what you're saying. Your God is limited. Now, if your God is limited, doesn't know the future, why are you worshipping him? <laughs> why are you worshipping him if he's limited, if he doesn't know the future? <laughs> if, he's, <laughs> if he's a creator, if he's a creature, why are you worshipping him? 
<clears throat> I'm asking real questions here. Fundamental questions. But the true creator is not contained, is not limited. In the true authentic Bibles, it doesn't say that God regretted. It's not mentioned. Because that didn't happen, doesn't happen, cannot happen. The true creator cannot regret. He is all knowing, he is out of his creation. Now, l l let's, let's go into them because uh, <clears throat> let's go into those mistakes in those current day Bibles. See what's going on. Who who claimed to be enlightened and wrote this nonsense? That's my question. Who claimed to be smart and made this and wrote this? We have to be critical of those people that wrote these Bibles. We have to be critical of them. Because they claim they were inspired by the Holy Spirit. Now, if that doesn't have, so that means you're claiming that you're not a regular person. That you have knowledge out of this word. That you were inspired by the Holy Spirit. Meaning, in your understanding, you were inspired by God. Now, if you're inspired by God, you are guided by that God. What you write and what you put in the page and you, you're certifying holy bible that means it should be straight shouldn't have any flaws shouldn't have you know mistakes contradictions <sighs> let's go into the second one you know The second one is John 17, 22. All right. That's in the current day Bibles for all these Christians. For all these people in churches that will claim, oh no, the Bible is pure, is good, is the word of God, there's no mistakes, no contradiction, everything is good, everything is good. Well, open your eyes, open your understanding, come back to your senses, alright, and go into John 17:22. John 17:22 it says this. <clears throat> The glory that you have given me, I have given to them, in that they may be one, even as we are one. All right. So here you're told that the glory you have given me is what I give them, so we are one. So, one. I mean, unity. Now, in 1 John 1 John 5.20 It says this <clears throat> 
And we know that the Son of God has come and has given us understanding so that we may know him who is true and we are in him who is true. In his Son, the Christ, he is the true God and eternal life. Now, <clears throat> in John 17, 22, you were told that God gave him the glory so that they are one. And that he gave that glory as well to his followers so they may be one. So all of them could be one in unity. And now in 1 John 5, 20, they're claiming that, oh, now he's the God. That Christ, that Jesus, that fake Jesus is God. So he's, So who gave him the glory then? Another errors. That's why you'll see some churches, they will say, oh no, Christ is God. Other churches will say, no, Christ is not God. Confusions, lies, mistakes. You see? Because the Bibles, the, the people that brought you these, they put mistakes and contradiction on purpose. So you're divided. So where is your unity? Where is your true knowledge? Where is Where is it? Where is it? Where's the unity in the churches? There isn't. Where's the knowledge? There isn't, because when you ask them tough questions, they are unable to answer. Where's their spirituality? What are they preaching? They're not even preaching sanctification. They just say, oh, come, you, you're always forgiven. You know, whatever you did, oh, as long as you accept uh, the name, that's it. And then move on with your life. Every Sunday you come, I'm sorry I did this. You're forgiven, go. You know, that's that's what they're doing. Same people that go into their churches on Sundays are the same people that on the Friday nights, Saturday nights, who are in the clubs, partying, drinking, and all these things. Where's sanctification? Where's the unity? There isn't. And now you see the state of the world, injustice, rampant. <clears throat> okay now also in John 17 3 because Christ is not God I mean that that fake Jesus is not God 17 3 <clears throat> It says this, and this is eternal life, is that they know you, the only true God. So even the Christ is saying, the eternal life is to know you. So I mean you. So I mean not me, it means you. I mean when you say you, it means you. And I mean there's a distinction. Is to know you, the only true God. And Christ, whom you have sent. And Christ, who you have sent. You have sent. So, distinction, once again. So, there's a distinction. But... Some people are going to look at the passages where he says that it's two different. They're different. People, person. They'll, they'll say, oh no, don't look at that. They're just going to focus on those passages that says they're the same. Other churches will focus on those that say they're different and don't look at what where it says they're the same. So you see, mistakes, lies, contradictions, errors, on purpose to distract you. To keep you confused, keep you in the lie, keep you believing in lies. Because if you accept a lie and you accept whatever they're saying, that I mean mentally they already they already got you. Spiritually, you they already got you. And now they can do whatever. <clears throat> 
Judge 11.31. Gonna go into these mistakes, expose them. And, um, yep, here we go. Judge 11.31 says this. Then whatever comes out of from the door of my house. Well, before I go there, I'm gonna go a little bit uh, to the 29, so we understand a little bit the context. Right. The title is Jephthah Tragic Vow. Then the spirit of the Lord was upon Jephthah, and he passed through Gilead and Manasseh. Manasseh and pass on to Mispat of Gilead and from Mispat of Gilead it passed on to the Ammonites. 13. And Jeff Jeff Pat Jeff Ta made a vow to the Lord and said if you will give the Ammonites into my hand 31 then whatever comes out from the door of my house to meet me when I return in place from the Ammonite shall be the Lord's and I will offer it up for burn offering. So Jephthah crossed over the Ammonites to fight against them and the Lord gave them to his hand and he struck them from Ahur to the neighbor, neighborhood of Minit, 20 city, and as far as Abel Keramin, with a great blow, so the Ammonites were subdued before the people of Israel. And then when you read the, the, the next passages, so here you're told that he made a vow. To give that Lord a burnt offering. And if he won the victory. And you are told in the same passage that the Lord gave him the victory. And then after he did the sacrifice. In verse 39. And the, at the end of the two months she returned to her father, who did with her according to his vow that he had made. She had never known a man, and he become and he became a custom in Israel. That the daughters of Israel went year by year to lament the daughter of Jephbad the Gile did four days in the year. So that person sacrificed his own daughter because he made a vow and the Lord of that, that Bible gave him, a, gave him victory according to his vow. And then after the victory, he accomplished. So that means that God, that Lord of the Bible approves. Now, of the sacrifices in Jeremiah 7 31 all right let's now expose the contradiction once again Seven thirty-one. it says this Uh, starting in the in verse 30 the valley of slaughter that's the title for the son of Judah have done evil in my sight declares the Lord the Lord they have set their death table things in the house that is called by my name to defile it and they have built the high places of Tophet 
which is in the valley of the son of Hinnom, to burn their sons and their daughters in the fires, in the fire, which I did not command, nor did it come into my mind. Therefore, behold, the days are coming, declared the Lord, when I will no more be called Tophet of or the valley of the son of Hinnon, but the valley of slaughter, for they will burn in Tophet because there is no room elsewhere. So here you're told that that Lord didn't think of that. It was it didn't come into his mind. And he didn't request those burnt offering. But then why did he call, why did he give victory, according to the same Bible, to that person who made the vow to give him sacrifice? I mean, why? And it doesn't stop there. If you go into Genesis 22.1, After this thing, God tested Abraham and said to him, Abraham, and he said, Here I am. He said, Take your son, your only son, Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains of which I shall tell you. So Abraham rose early in the morning. You know? So here you're told, that God tested Abram and asked him to take his son to go make him a sacrifice. To sacrifice his son. Now, he tested. Now, at the end, here you're told. when uh, he was going into the mountain to do the sacrifice. Verse 15, And the angel of the Lord called to Abraham the second time from heaven and said, By myself I have sworn, declared the Lord, because you have done this and have not withheld your son, your only son, I will surely bless you, and I will surely multiply your offspring as the stars of heaven and as the sand of that is on the seashore and your offspring shall possess the gate of his enemies and in your offspring shall all the nation of the earth be blessed because you have obeyed my voice so That angel then came and says, okay, uh, don't do it. Uh, if in the verse 10, then Abram reached out of his hand and took the knife to slaughter his son. 11. But the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven and said, Abram, Abram. And he said, here I am, he said. Do not lay your hand on the boy or do anything to him, for now I know that you fear God. So for now I know that you fear God. So here, once again, you're seeing the limitation of that God of the Bible. He's asking Abram to do the sacrifice, to test Abram, to see if Abram loves him. I mean, doesn't he know? Doesn't he know the hearts of everyone, of every man? If he does, then why does he need to test people? And then when you read, you, you're told that, oh, he tested, and Abram basically passed his test. And then he said, okay, now I don't. You know, I didn't know before, but just a short period of time, and then you proved to me. So Abram proves, proved something to God, you know. So Abram knew that he were willing to do anything. But God didn't know, and God had to test him. It's like a quiz, you know, 
you pass or you fail. You have to prove to me. Once again, they're limiting that God of the Bible. <clears throat> but in James 1.13, it says this. So many mistakes. So many contradictions. So many lies. I mean, how does one read this and we tell them there is lies, there's contradictions. Stop believing everything you read. You know, don't take this at face value. Research. And then they're, they're still going on like nothing, nothing happened. You know, you're showing them the contradiction. They're still going on to their churches as, as if they didn't listen to you. That's very troubles. Alright. Uh, go into James 1 3. And just one moment here. James 1 13 it says this let no one say when he's tempted I am being tempted by God for God cannot be tempted with evil and he himself tempts no one so here you're told in James 1 13 that God doesn't tempt that God doesn't test but in Genesis uh, 22 1, he tested Abram. So, now, next, there is Matthew 27 5. Let's read. Matthew 7 5 says this you hypocrite first take oh no that's 7 is 27 Matthew 27 5 it says this and throwing down the pieces of silver into the temple he departed and he went and hanged himself now we're talking about Judah right now According to the Bible here, in Matthew 27, Matthew 27, 5, Judah did hang himself. Now let's go into Act, Act 1, 18. So that's the apostles, right? This is what they say. Now this man acquired a field with the reward of his wickedness and failing headlong, he burst open in the middle and all his bowels gushed out. So was it hanged or did he fell on his sword? It's either one or the other. And now you're told that he acquired a field, right? You're told you acquired a field in Act 
1 18. But in Matthew 27:5, it says, And he threw, throwing down the pieces of silver into the temple. You were told that he threw it into the temple. Did he throw it in the temple or did the butter filled with it? And did he hang himself? Or did he fall on his sword? Those are different things, different possibilities. Those are different. So there's two and then there's two. So you multiply two and then two. Four different possibilities. And one version says this, the other version says that. One passage in Matthew says this, and the other in Act of Apostles says that. So Matthew, is it Matthew we should believe, or is it Act of the Apostles? Who is Matthew? Who is that guy? What did he know? I mean, couldn't they, when they wrote this, couldn't they like figure it out? Okay, let's let's get together and then have one story that makes sense has let's get all our facts straight you know i mean if you make an essay in school and there's so many errors and contradictions you you would fail i mean they, they'll say no 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 your your story doesn't add up you know you you fail but here we are people made stories full of lies, contradiction, errors, they falsify black people's history and people are still believing in it. Even when you're showing them the proof and you're proving, demonstrating with, to them that there's errors. There's a lot, of, a lot of it here. You can go over it yourself. You can copy that. <clears throat> now, there is the authentic Bible here. You may search all right let me let me put myself just a little bit in the little corner here <clears throat> so here's bibel like i've mentioned the authentic bible the only authentic bible without errors or contradictions is uh, mankind real history black people true history the hidden history now unveiled the biblical history without falsification and then here you have the link where you can get it. And then here another one, Bibel. And then here are some links you may visit. We have here. And then we have here some more links. All right. Now. That's. So, that was the Bible study. We went over a lot. And, um, yeah. If you have any questions, you may ask them in the comments. We'll be able to answer, you know, respectful comments. You know, good one. We will answer. And um, watch more videos, more teachings. Um, and stay tuned for more. All right. Well, before I sign off, I'll say all glory to Loba. And um, Loba is the only creator, the true creator. And yeah. And Zul Lassan is the only teacher. Now, that's the, the prophet of our time. So all these fake prophets, all these fake pastors in churches, just you you should just stop stop right there close and just learn and then just give up okay <clears throat>